the word that I preach is, it's really so exciting for me. Um, all my life, I've been quite an adventurous type of person. Um, I was a figure skater when I was in school and I always wanted to do things. I got married very early. I was 19 when I got married. But at the age of 35, I realized I haven't done the things that I want to do. And I tell you, <laughs> from then, I started deep sea diving, jumping out of airplanes. These little things that I haven't done. At 50, I climbed Kilimanjaro. So I've always been like an adventurous heart on my inside. But I never understood that the most exciting, adventurous thing in the world is to discover the Word of God, the Bible, the way it is hooked together, the way it is lined up, the way it works together. It's just so exciting for me. It's like I, I might not be running around and jumping off airplanes and stuff, but I'm having the time of my life. And the guys watching, I know that you guys are sharing this feeling. Now, when Jesus rose from the dead, what? That is just like... Something that could not have happened, happened. And then he started appearing. For 40 days, he walked with the disciples. Come on, preaching the kingdom of God. Now, when he came, he started preaching the kingdom of God. John the Baptist preached the kingdom of God. But the kingdom suffered violence and the violent took it by force. And we know that's the, the pharisaical system that invaded the, the law of God and the commands and the patterns that God gave. And they really, they usurped it. And then they want to kill the son. So when Jesus says he came to his own and his own received him, not, they didn't receive him. They killed him. Now, after he was dead, never, never has anybody been resurrected from the dead. There has been people raised from the dead, like Lazarus, but he died again. But Jesus was raised never to die again. Romans 6. Now this is awesome because if we are baptized in him, we are raised with him never to die again. So this is very important that we understand these things. Baptism means you are immersed in him. But we also read in 1 Corinthians 10 that the people in the Old Testament, Israel, God's people, they were baptized into Moses. So they were immersed into Moses. So what Moses had to give was very important and we have to take a look at it. But here Jesus is now with his disciples and he's about to ascend for the last time. <laughs> This is amazing. He says, he that descended is, he that ascended is the same that descended. And he descended into the lower parts and then he ascended up and he ascended to be in the heavens. And he's going to descend in the final day again. And what he's going to do, he's going to bring the cloud of witness with him. So we need to understand the ascending and the descending. And this is the wheels um, that, Ezekiel saw the beginning is the end. It's always circular, circular. And he says these wheels went up and down, up and down. And this is all Ezekiel, but that's for next week. So now Jesus is ascending and he says something to his disciples. They still did not get the kingdom. They're like, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? <laughs> he says, guys, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. What? In 1 Thessalonians 5, you know that you will not know the times and the seasons. But then he says, the day of the Lord will be like a thief in the night. Talking about times and seasons. So we need to understand all these things and they, they weave together. You cannot read anything in the Bible separate. When you read things in the Bible separate, it is to apply this concept in your life for this little trouble you have now and to sort of step up and get your way around. But when you read the volume of the book, you're not busy with your little thing. You are busy with the purposes of God. So this is why it is so crucial to understand 
the Bible from beginning to end and it's the whole space of time and God wants us to understand it. So here he's ascending and he said to them, oh, come on, guys, you're not going to understand the times and the seasons. And he said something in verse eight, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So that is where many people get stuck. Oh, we want the Holy Ghost power. We will heal the sick. We will deliver the demons and we will set people free. Yes, that is the kingdom. The kingdom is righteousness, peace and joy. And it's a power from within. Because even if you think of righteousness, peace and joy and your circumstances, it doesn't work. But if you have the power from within, it's a power that is above all the natural things. And it's only by the Holy Spirit power that you can have joy while everybody around you is dying. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that you can feel righteous while everybody is downing you. It's something that works from the inside out. And this is the reason why Jesus died to give us the Spirit. Now he says, you will be my witness when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you will be my witness unto both Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Wow. So it starts right in Jerusalem, heading out to Samar Samaria, their local enemies, and then to Judea, the whole of the land and to all the parts of the world. You will be my witnesses. And he says this to the 12 disciples. And we need to understand what this witness really is about. Now, it's not just, oh, guys, we know Jesus. We know Jesus. No, there's a specific thing that you need to witness about. Now, he says in Romans, he says, you must be ready to give account of the testimony that you are carrying. What? In Revelation 19.10, he says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So there's something working now inside of us after we receive the spirit that is bigger than our natural situations or anything that we can go through. So what did they need to be a witness about? Now, the first 40 years after the cross was crucial because this was the time of forming of the church. It's the embryo state of the church. And all the principles laid down there is um, very important to understand where we are going. So if you get stuck in Revelation, <laughs> you're not going nowhere. And, you know, there are many precious people that do not understand Revelation and they will never move into the purposes of God. Although they've got God, they're born again, but they never sort of possess the kingdom. But there is a generation that will possess the kingdom. So now it started off by Jesus telling the 12, you will be my witnesses. Now, before he said that and before this happened, the night he was betrayed, he broke the bread. <sighs> Everything came together there. Because for 1,500 years, they carried a symbol with them, the Passover festival that they got the night they left Egypt. And he said, if you partake of this, death will pass over. And he says, you must keep this. And it was a festival that they kept annually. And then he came, he said, I longed to eat this bread with you. Why? He was the very fulfillment of that whole ceremony that they carried. So everything that they carried with them through the desert and through the years, the whole law system was a testimony <laughs> unto Christ. This is really important to know. Because on the mountain, God gave Moses the commands of life. Oh, I've got to go there. I have now just turned my whole sermon upside down, but I'm going to go there. 
He gave them the commands of life. He said, do not do this, do not do that, do not do this, do not do that. This is what you must do and come on. It's all, it never says if you don't do it, you're going to be killed. But they rejected that system even before they got it. So when Moses came to give them the law, they already broke all 10 commandments. So Moses was the only person <laughs> that broke all 10 commandments, one shot. And then a system of the law was given them. But the law harnessed death. Listen, this is all to do with life and death. The Bible is a book about life and death. Now they were given a system to harness death, but it didn't bring life. Because all have sinned and lost the glory. Moses is the first one to say, show me your glory. Now the glory of God is above the heavens. This is why we need to understand realms. And Moses dared to say, show me your glory, while he was face to face with God. And God said, you cannot see my face. While he was face to face with God. Now, this is very interesting because Moses couldn't see the face of God, yet he saw the face of God. In other words, he couldn't see the forward side while he saw the face of God. So the forward side is one thing and the face of God is another thing, but it's both face. It's like our translations doesn't have the words to really take us to that. But if you have the spirit and the interpretation in the spirit, in the word, you will understand these things. So Moses couldn't see Jesus Christ. He only saw the pattern.